cheese. At one point in time in the distant past of like a year ago, I applied to the Capcom Creator Program because I really enjoy their games. I have since changed stances on their creator program, and I'm reasonably certain that they sacrificed babies to some kind of elder god to receive the list of microtransactions that they have to include in every game that they release. I am also positive, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that if this video does even marginally well, I am 100% going to be blacklisted from any kind of Capcom anything, especially if I keep joking that they eat babies. They probably don't eat babies, but I can't say for sure, and Capcom hasn't purchased my confidentiality DLC for $4.99 yet. <laughs> oh man. Let's get a couple important things out of the way right here at the top of the video, because statistically speaking, I only have the majority of you for like another 30 seconds before you open up TikTok. One, if you like the game, that's totally fine. I like it too. It's fun when it works, and you aren't going to get the death penalty for committing the crime of having fun. Two, if you are one of the people that keeps reeing about game reviewers, let me educate you for a second. First of all, they had no fucking clue about the microtransactions. They got jump scared just as hard as the rest of us. If you've never reviewed a game before it's been out with an embargo before, what typically happens is you get sent a beta branch key that you put into the settings of the Steam copy they send you, and that lets you into an early build of the game. However, everybody that has access to those beta branches sees the same Steam store page that the rest of us see. So right up until the game launched and all those fancy little $2 revive and teleport crystals showed up, all of the reviewers had no clue and obviously wouldn't talk about it in their review because as far as they were concerned, Dragon's Dogma 2 had no microtransactions. And if you're one of the people that are pissing themselves because these reviewers didn't complain about performance, let's use our critical thinking skills here for a moment. I know it hurts. For most of the people that are large enough creators to receive a review copy of Dragon's Dogma 2, this is their job and they have the equipment to match that job. Susie Hunter even tweeted out that she basically has a supercomputer, so the game mostly ran fine for her. Despite that, she is currently being harassed for this. If you are one of those people, I would normally tell you to eat shit, but if you actually go out of your way to intentionally harass people on the internet over a review of a fucking video game, it is very obvious to me that your head was used as a stand-in soccer ball in an over 30 intramural league match when you were a baby, and my mom told me it's not nice to make fun of people. Despite that, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say on the record, this is a fact that if you harass anyone over a fucking video game, you huff farts and eat glue, and no one in your family fucking loves you. Hey, that rhymes. <sighs> All right, are they gone? I imagine most of the people that felt called out by that are either calling me names in the comments or stopped listening the second they realized I'm not just an echo chamber for their opinion. So fuck them. Let's get into why Capcom sucks donkey dick, yeah? The third thing I wanted to get out of the way at the top of the video, but saved for now, was that we all need to be very certain that we don't accidentally blame the devs for this. I saved this point for now because if you're still listening, I would wager that you aren't the reactionary type. And when we all engage in conversation about this game, the distinction needs to be made very clear that the people who made the game and the people who are selling the game are very different. And I imagine the ones who actually worked on Dragon's Dogma 2 are fucking pissed right now. Imagine you work on a game for years, day in and day out, trying to make a sick ass game and you succeed. It's super fun and it's got tons of content worth doing. It just needs a little bit more time in the oven to finish cooking, but what's that? Uh oh, you hear that? If you don't hear it, you damn well smell it because that's the stench of a recently graduated MBA from Stanford that thinks battle passes are fucking sick. The money guys in the upper management at Capcom are to blame here, through and through. This is a company failure, not a workforce failure. And if I see Capcom doing mass layoffs in a couple months, citing money troubles from a lack of DD2 sales in a single goddamn executive gets a bonus, I think I am going to spontaneously combust. 
I know I'm making a lot of jokes in this video, but seriously, if this shit happens, I hope to God everyone responsible gets food poisoning forever. May your shits be many and your hoes few. You know, the morbidly funny thing to me about this whole situation too is that this is so, so far from the first time Capcom has done this. But you put one post on Reddit about a $3 charge to edit your character's appearance and 40,000 upvotes later, your game is fucked, man. You'd think those NBA grads would realize that releasing a broken game or getting review bombed because you have some of the worst microtransactions known to man are both bigger income losses in the long run than, this is gonna sound crazy, I know, but that costs more than pushing the game's launch by two months for more QA and bug fixing. Fucking wild, right? And the worst part is that now a game that's actually super fun is gonna be forever marred, like Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky, where no one can talk about them without being like, uh, well, it used to suck, but now it's fun. The writing has been on the wall with this shit for years, though. Dragon's Dogma 2 just happened to be the perfect storm. The Call of Duty kids haven't had a new game to piss their pants over for a little while, so they've directed their anger here, and for once, I think that's a good thing. Wake the fuck up, Capcom. You know what? If there's a Capcom executive that makes their way to this video, play this video at this timestamp in a board meeting so you can know exactly how you fucked up and why you were wrong. Let's, let's just give him a second, let him get it set up. I, I think we're in the meeting with them now. Good? Great. <clears throat> now that I have all of your attention, I would like to publicly shame whoever wrote this statement in the Steam announcement page. There's a rare few statements in gaming that will go down as historically stupid and silly. Stuff like 10,000 years of experience balancing League of Legends. And now we are looking at adding a feature to the game that will allow players to restart the game. More details to follow. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Did no one think about any of this before you just full sent it? You built up so much community goodwill with the character creator, and even that has slots for multiple characters in pawns, but the main game doesn't? The 24-hour flip in public sentiment has to be historical, right? Like an all-time high for hype to immediate outrage. The board meeting might have shut me off by now, honestly. I've just been kind of making fun of them. Let's get to the point, though. The game runs like shit. The game does not have to run like shit. You need to schedule in time for all future releases for more QA in bug fixing than you currently have. Because a game that looks marginally better than Red Dead Redemption 2 that came out five years ago should not run a hundred times worse than Red Dead Redemption 2 that came out five years ago. Real talk for a second, graphics have not made that much of a jump. Games now do not look that much better than they used to, so what the fuck is going on with all these games running so bad? I mean, I loved Alan Wake 2, but that game ran like shit too. And I don't have a supercomputer, but I should be able to run most things on high on 1080p with my rig. There's very little in the way of excuses for this. It's just embarrassing. That's the big one, though. That's the big takeaway from this. Make your game fucking run. I don't want to buy a car that breaks down all the time. You MBA fucksticks understand business, right? I do not want to buy a faulty product. I will instead look to other products within the industry. And let me tell you that immediately following Baldur's Gate 3's release last year, you are so far from having Monopoly on the 100-hour fantasy RPG. Competition is fierce, and you did not bring your A-game. Sorry, let me adjust that statement to be more accurate. The devs that made the game absolutely brought their A-game, and then you fucked them over. Now, for a refresher course, let's run through some of the DLC for Capcom's recent games, yeah? Because if you thought Dragon's Dogma was rough, let's start with the most recent offender. Exoprimal has 40 fucking DLC options, and none of them are actual expansions or new content. There is the Battle Pass, and then 39 other options that are all either cosmetics or early unlocks, meaning you skip the grind. You know the part where you play the game? Yeah, you can pay money to skip that. This is where the co-carnage tweet comes into play because he makes a phenomenal point in it. 
the inherent implication with microtransactions that lets you have things like revives, cosmetic changes, and the like, is that there will be a need for you to get more of these things than you will have available to you without buying them. What I mean by this is that the mere existence of revive stones that you can pay real money for implies that there will not be enough for you in-game, so they offer them on the store for real money. Wildly enough, this isn't the case in Dragon's Dogma 2. It's entirely the wrong game to have this monetization for. But I'm like 15 solid hours in, and I have an overabundance of all the things you can pay real money for. Like, even if you skip the people that are just not buying them on principle, no one's gonna buy them because you don't fucking need them in-game anyways. And now they have all this backlash for nothing. Now, with something like Exoprimal, the fact that there's an option for me to pay to skip content makes me think that the content was designed to make me want to skip it. Rather than making it worth playing, it makes me think the game was designed to push me to buy the skips instead of just playing the thing I already paid for. I don't even own Exoprimal, and I find it offensive that you think I would pay seven United States dollars for a Monster Hunter skin in this fucking robot game. Street Fighter 6 is admittedly kind of a live service game, so I'll give it a pass to a degree with the character season pass, although it's so overpriced. But what is wild to me is the cosmetics for Street Fighter. Now, they got smart with this one and don't have 200 DLC packs on the Steam store page. Instead, you have to buy coins in-game that never add up to the amount you need to buy stuff, so you end up buying more coins than necessary and paying more. Kind of like how old Call of Duty DLCs used to cost like 15 bucks worth of points, but Xbox only sold 10 and $20 increments. Just eat shit, man. Resi 4 Remake has a bunch of this shit too for some reason. You know, another single player game? They sell upgrade tickets, so you can skip the part where you play the game and have to make decisions about upgrading guns. $2.99 a pop and you don't have to think anymore. They sell them in packs of 1, 3, and 5 for your convenience. Monster Hunter is a mess with this too. Pretty much every Capcom game, regardless of what it is, has some form of this attached to it. Because at some point they tried to get away with it and they did. And for some reason, the reputation hit is worth it for them financially, I guess, because they just keep doing it. That might be changing now, finally. Now, I can only speak from personal experience with this, but I'm one of the few people I know that put my wallet on the line with this game. Pretty much all my streamer friends are waiting until the performance is fixed and the price drops. And that's the sentiment I'm seeing from a lot of people on Steam, on Reddit, on Twitter, everywhere. People saying they want to buy the game eventually, though, isn't a promise. I don't think you can unfuck this in the short term. Star Wars Jedi Survivor had that launch snafu with, like, dog-ass performance and still has mixed reviews. So whatever the road back to good graces looks like for Capcom, it's a long road, and it starts with the death of these stupid fucking microtransactions. If uh, somehow I'm still up on the screen at the Capcom board meeting, I would like to point you to the only game that ever has truly done microtransaction things well, and that's Deep Rock Galactic. Rock and Stone! Every single one of their DLCs are just skins. They are marked as non-essential supporter editions for people who just want to give the devs more money. And no, I am neither exaggerating nor kidding about that. Come to think of it, they have battle passes too. Free battle passes and there's no fomo because if you miss out on the stuff in the past when a new season rolls around all the stuff in the old battle passes goes into the random loot table so you can just find it while you play the game it is amazing to me that this still hasn't clicked but since it's obvious there's some very thick skulls over at capcom i'll even make a checklist for you the following criteria has to be met for microtransactions to not piss people off it has to be genuine content added to the game, like an expansion or a map pack. Not a season pass and a promise of content in the future. Content that is there to be played and add something. Or, it has to be exclusively cosmetic and provide no advantage in the game. This does not exempt you from people being pissed about cosmetic DLC, though. These cosmetic DLCs are only okay if there is sufficient drip available to get in the game that people already paid for. They already bought your game. They don't want to have to pay again to look cool playing it. If these conditions are not met, your microtransactions are going to piss people off. 
I know all you MBA sharp monkeys drive Teslas, so let me put it this way. Imagine every time you go to drive somewhere, you have to swipe your credit card to use the speakers already in your car to play music. And rolling down the rear right window costs extra money too. It's fucking annoying. Stop doing it. I'd love to be hopeful and wish for the overwhelmingly negative response Capcom received to get the message across and then have them enter like a redemption arc and start doing things correctly, but that's not realistic. What's probably going to happen is a bunch of people that did nothing wrong are going to get laid off. They're going to double down and their next game is going to be a mobile app where you unlock letters to spell out a secret message for a buck 99 a letter. And the message, once you've bought all the DLC to see it, just spells out FUCK YOU in all caps. Sven from Larian Studios hit the nail on the head a couple days ago in an interview where he said corporate greed is ruining the games industry. He's right. The corpo weasels are doing their best to make everything suck. And even though AA and indie games are safe for now, don't think for a second that they won't worm their way down the ladder over time. It's a slippery slope we're on, and unless something changes soon, it's only down from here. It makes me very sad that if Capcom hadn't been so greedy and if they just pushed the game a couple months, this would have been a game of the year contender. I mean, seriously, if the game ran well, it would be a shoe in for top five this year. There's so much cool shit to do. I've ridden a griffin up into the sky. I've had trolls fighting dragons. Like it's very clear Capcom took some really great notes with how Monster Hunter plays with the way you can mount shit and stagger it all. Now the big ass monsters fight each other too. The combat is super fun and the world is as interesting as the first game's world. And the pawn system is awesome and it's all buried six feet under while Capcom is pissing on the grave. Time will tell, and I genuinely hope I'm wrong about all of this, but I don't think I am. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I normally do video essay stuff and shorter, like six to 10 minute reviews of indie games, but this felt worth the effort to talk about. Also, the footage you've been watching in the background is from my stream. So if you enjoyed the video at all, please do me a favor, like it and subscribe so the algorithm knows you liked it and follow that link in the description. Drop by my Twitch sometime. I regularly do release streams for all manner of games. Sometimes it's that good shit like Alan Wake 2 and sometimes it's that dog shit like Lords of the Fallen and Redfall. I'll be streaming more Dragon's Dogma 2 in the coming weeks as well. You never know what you're going to get with me, and I would really love to hear what you have to say about Dragon's Dogma 2, where we can have a live conversation or just leave it in the comments. But either way, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. So can I throw you off a cliff? Save and continue. No way. No shot. Right? I'm going to alt F4.